This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another episode of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thank you for joining me. A few years ago, it felt like the dream of solar electric vehicles would soon become reality, with not one, but three solar electric cars heading towards production. Earlier this year, Lightyear declared a bankruptcy shortly after the Lightyear Zero had entered production, leaving just two solar electric vehicles heading to market. Now there's just one after Sono Motors announced this week that it had given up its plans on bringing the Sono Sion to market. This is not only a major blow to the future of solar electric vehicles, but also a major blow to customers who wanted a more affordable electric vehicle that wasn't a massive crossover SUV. Sono Motors says that it will now focus instead on designing and building transportation sector solar panel systems, which it will then sell to OEMs willing to bring solar panel technology to their existing vehicles. Now, Terra is now the last solar electric vehicle company out there. Or is it? Because Lightyear, which had declared bankruptcy earlier this year, is now back. In a sort of kind of way, as it tries to raise money to build the Lightyear 2. Unlike Sono Motors, which hasn't declared bankruptcy, Lightyear has gone through the bankruptcy process. But now Lex Hofslot, the founder of Lightyear, says that a new company, Atlas Technologies Holding BV, has been established that will hopefully be able to bring the light year two to production. Stating that 8 million euros was raised in a single day to make this happen, Hofschlert said that an agreement has been reached to allow the new company to bring IP from the original company to the new firm as collateral for all stakeholders in the new venture. It's not unheard of for a startup to be reborn from the ashes of a previously bankrupt organization, but going forward to success is pretty rare. If all of this doom and gloom is getting you down, don't worry, because I've got a sliver of good news now from another troubled EV startup, Archimoto. Earlier this year, Archimoto basically shuttered the majority of its operations after what amounted to a terrible end of 2022. But this week, the company sent out an email to investors and customers proclaiming that production had resumed after the company had raised an additional 12 million US dollars in capital. How did this turnaround happen? Simply put, a quick sale of additional stock at a reduced price. Archimoto says in its latest update that it hopes to begin production at its Oregon facility next month and says that new vehicles will come out with a new steering update that will reduce steering effort by as much as 40%. That said, I'm honestly not sure how long $12 million will really last it. After all of that doom and gloom, don't worry, there is more coming. It's time for some really freaking good news. And yes, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm really quite excited. That's because this week, just a few weeks after the current US administration confirmed that Tesla was opening up its supercharger network to non-Teslas in the US, the very first Tesla Magic Dock supercharger has been spotted in the wild. Unlike a traditional Tesla supercharger, which has just a Tesla connector on the end of a charge cable, a Tesla Magic Dock equipped supercharger has a special Tesla to CCS adapter that stays attached to the supercharger when it's being used by a Tesla, but then automatically detaches with the charge cable when a non-Tesla comes to charge. I cannot express enough how simple the design is and how much I cannot wait to give this a go. Good work, Tesla. More information has been released about Ford's current stop production and stop delivery order for the F-150 Lightning. As explained in last week's show, an F-150 Lightning awaiting final inspection that was parked outside Ford's Rouge production facility caught fire, prompting Ford to halt production and launch an investigation. This week, we learn that Ford is now holding discussions with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration on said issue and plans on continuing the halt at the Rouge for an additional week. 
According to an official statement from Ford, its battery supplier for the F-150 Lightning, SK On, has identified a manufacturing issue that led to defects with the vehicle that ultimately caused the fire. As a consequence, changes have already been made at the battery facility, but sadly there's no news yet if already delivered vehicles are affected by this defect. We have long criticized the Mazda MX-30 for being little more than a compliance car, thanks to its limited availability, limited specs, and comparatively high price tag. With a sub-100 mile, 160 kilometer real-world range, the MX-30 hasn't sold in particularly large numbers, and later this year it will be joined in the marketplace not by a larger range variant, but a range extended variant in Europe and Asia. This week, though, we learned from Mazda's US CEO that, despite rumors to the contrary, the same range-extended model is likely heading to the US as well. Offering no improvement on the battery-only range, this plug-in hybrid variant will use Mazda's rotary engine to make it go further. Given that rotary engines are far more polluting than even a reciprocating piston engine, this particular pairing, though, isn't going to be all that green. Lucid published its fourth quarter and year-end financials this week, showing that it has yet to make a profit, but that, thanks to continued backing, it's got at least a year to do so. Lucid produced 7,180 cars last year, higher than its revised goal of 7,000 vehicles, but a long way from its original goal of 20,000 vehicles. Of those, only 4,369 were delivered. This year, Lucid said it will produce between 10 and 14,000 cars and states that it believes it can average 3,500 cars per quarter moving forwards. In terms of financials, Lucid finished the year with $608.2 million in revenue with losses totaling $2.6 billion. However, with $4.9 billion in the bank, Lucid says it should be good through to the start of next year. The last few years have seen incredible growth in the number of grid-scale solar projects coming online around the world, giving landowners a great way to earn some extra money. Yet, as NPR in the U.S. detailed this week in a detailed expose, farmers in much of the U.S. who are looking forwards to leasing their land out to solar farms as an additional way of earning money are facing a new challenge – citizens for responsible solar. Like many political groups, Citizens for Responsible Solar looks like a grassroots campaign designed to oppose solar projects at a local level. Yet the non-profit has roots that can be traced back to career politicians and policy wonks connected with conservatives in the US and beyond. NPR says that there are now 12 similar groups across the US following its lead, which could dramatically affect the rollout of large-scale grid-connected solar projects and wind farms around the world. The politicians often listen to the loudest voice, and we know that's not always the voice of reason. So yeah, you might hate politics, but it really is time to get involved. Unlike internal combustion engine vehicles, which used waste heat from combustion to heat their cabins in winter, EVs must generate cabin heat using dedicated heaters. To date, resistive heaters have been popular in many production EVs, if not as efficient as heat pumps, but now Ford engineers have announced the results of an engineering study that says for keeping passengers warm, using heated surfaces instead of air heating systems can keep passengers just as warm while saving energy in the process. As part of a longer research program supported by the European Commission, Ford engineers heated everything from door panels to floor mats in a fleet of test vehicles and found that these heated surfaces, combined with heated seats and steering wheels, can be 13% more efficient than a standard air heating system. It's definitely an alternative to a heat pump. EV startup Lordstown Motors spent a large chunk of the last few years talking up its prowess in the EV world. Despite a small but eager group of people telling us very aggressively in the comments that Lordstown would beat Rivian and Ford electric pickups to production, we expected the opposite. This week, while Lordstown has yet to officially publish its year-end financials, that's going to happen in two weeks, we got the first hint that not all is good. An official recall of 19 of 
of the 31 Lordstown Endurance pickups that have been made to date, which the firm says are either with customers or being used internally at the company. According to Lordstown, affected vehicles may suddenly lose power, which is obviously not a good thing. Add in the fact that the former partner of the company, Workhorse, is trying to cancel an IP agreement it signed four years ago with Lordstown, IP that the endurance relies on to be built. And it's a concerning situation all around. Before we go to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car? Because if you are, and you are in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you should charge up with, and of course, how to get clean, green, renewable energy at home. So what are you waiting for? Follow that link below and start your journey today. The majority of new electric cars coming to market have some form of single pedal driving capability, allowing you to use just the accelerator to speed up and slow down, often to a complete stop. But Porsche has steadfastly refused to offer single pedal driving, opting instead to use a very well executed pedal blending system on the brake. This week, the senior manager of chassis testing at Porsche Engineering explained why that is. It's all to do with energy conservation. Rather than engage regenerative braking on liftoff, Porsche has engineered its cars to coast when you lift off, which when driven correctly allows you to go a little further. It keeps your car's kinetic energy as kinetic energy rather than transferring it to electrical energy, a process that's inherently lossy and thus claims Porsche it's a far better choice. It also means people who are new to EVs are more likely to feel at home behind the wheel. And finally, we've seen a lot of automakers compete against each other in the last few years to ensure their carbon footprint of their EVs are as low as possible. Many EVs coming to market today can claim low emissions during their production, thanks to renewable energy and carbon offsetting. But when it comes to deliveries, most EVs are still delivered to dealerships using big old stinky diesel trucks. And that's something that Nissan is eager to make sure it doesn't continue. It's just begun dealership delivery of its Nissan Aria SUV to select dealerships in Los Angeles and Southern California using electric big rigs made by both Kenworth and Nikola Motor. While this is a test program, Nissan remains hopeful that it will be able to make it a permanent thing. But despite saying it's first, it's not. That would be Tesla, which I believe already delivers some of its cars and has done for some time using Tesla semis. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out in the latest on EV news from this channel. And if you haven't already, it is time that you switch to Aotearoa's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make that switch. And in doing so, you will help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back with awesome content very soon, as will the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. If you haven't seen him getting data out of an EV, it's high time you did. And I'll be back here next weekend for our usual roundup show. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.